Welcome back to the short video series on the molecular quantum mechanics methodology. This second video will begin to introduce the practical steps for performing a geometry optimization. In the last video, we discussed the fundamental problem of determining the shape of a molecule. We looked at various potential energy surfaces and discussed concepts of local versus global minima, as well as saddle points. In this video, we will discuss the practical steps of geometry optimization. Geometry optimization is the quantum mechanical calculation for predicting the optimal shape of a molecule. The typical goal is to find the global minimum. We perform geometry optimizations with Jaguar. Let us begin with an important practical consideration, that is, the size of the system. When we think about system size, we are typically balancing two factors, the computational expense, meaning the time and resources needed to perform the calculation, versus the quality and relevance of the results, meaning how well you can trust the output geometry and the accompanying properties. Broadly, we can categorize system sizes into three classes. First, take very simple molecules with, say, less than 25 atoms. It is no problem to predict the geometry of a small molecule, like tetrahydrofuran, THF, on the order of seconds or minutes with DFT quantum mechanics. This is a trivial task for Jaguar, and the results are quite likely to be very good. Note we are speaking here about molecules alone in the gas phase. It is no longer a trivial task to treat aggregations of even small molecules when they form liquids or solids. For medium-sized molecules, up to roughly 100 atoms, it can take minutes to hours to perform a geometry optimization. Consider, for example, a prototypical organic electronic device component, a drug-like molecule, or a simple organometallic catalyst or deposition precursor. Despite somewhat greater computational expense, with care, the results can be high quality. Finally, consider complex systems like a polymer electrolyte or large protein, or a condensed phase system such as a liquid or a crystal structure. With respect to this third class, computational chemists tackle modeling these systems with other approaches, namely molecular dynamics and periodic quantum mechanics. These methodologies are taught and employed elsewhere. Performing a geometry optimization on systems like these at the DFT level is, for one, practically impossible. But also, even if we could perform such a calculation on these systems, the results would not be useful in practice, because chemical processes involving large, flexible molecules should be characterized by conformational ensembles and not by a single optimal geometry. Performing a geometry optimization on a system like this is possible, but requires tactics that are special to periodic systems. For our purposes, in this video, we will only focus on the first and second class of molecules. In particular, we will mainly focus on molecules in the second class. These molecules present interesting challenges and opportunities, which can be explored with quantum mechanical calculations. These molecules are also the typical size of those found in organic electronic devices, drug-like molecules, homogeneous catalysts, and deposition precursors. Recall that there are many methods for solving the Schrodinger equation. We will need to choose a method for performing a geometry optimization. It is remarkable that the field of quantum chemistry can be boiled down to choosing an appropriate numerical method of solving the Schrodinger equation for the electrons. We wish to solve the Schrodinger equation to balance computational expense and quality. Even though there are many methods, density functional theory, DFT, has the best balance between the accuracy it provides and the computational cost associated with it. DFT is extremely well established, with a Nobel Prize to its name. It has a rigorous theoretical foundation, and has proven with time to be a reliable approach. Particularly for scientists and engineers seeking to incorporate molecular modeling into their R&D workflows, we recommend DFT. That is why Jaguar, which focuses on practical application, uses DFT as its main method. We are now ready to hone in on the steps of a DFT geometry optimization. The simplest scenario looks like this. Here are the steps. 1. Prepare a good initial guess or a starting point, from which we will be doing a geometry optimization. 2. Choose the DFT functional and basis set. We will explain these terms in just a minute. 3. Solve a form of the Schrodinger equation that produces DFT energy for the current geometry. These equations are called self-consistent field, or SCF equations, and we will also explain these shortly. 4. Check if the energy is at the minimum. 
If not, adjust the geometry and return to step 3. If the energy is a minimum, proceed to 5, output the final geometry and energy. Let's follow a few steps of this process dynamically to understand how this works. Here we have a small molecule that is actually an interesting monomer for sustainable polymer development. We must first choose a starting geometry, shown here on the left. Then, we must choose a functional and basis set. Again, for now, let's just accept these terms as inputs. Now the optimization begins. Our input geometry is the first geometry. Jaguar will proceed to solve the DFT equations, which generates an energy value. This energy is returned in Hartree's, which can be easily converted to a more well-known energy term, like kilocal per mole. On the right, we plot this energy on a curve. Now, Jaguar will check if this energy is a minimum based on several criteria that we will cover a bit later in the next video. Unsurprisingly, this first geometry is not the minimum geometry, and so Jaguar will adjust the geometry, moving each atom in 3D space in search of a lower energy structure. The loop starts again. Jaguar solves the DFT equations, which generates a new energy value. This energy is lower than the original energy, we are making progress. The ball moves down the curve. We check again for a minimum, and again we don't meet the criteria, so we adjust the geometry. This loop proceeds for as many steps as needed. Let's watch it a little faster. Notice that the energy is dropping each step, and the ball is approaching the bottom of the well. Some of the earlier jumps in energy were quite large, several kilocal, but as we get closer to the end, the jumps are much smaller. This is a good sign that we are approaching convergence. Finally, this time, when we check if the energy is a minimum, we do meet the criteria. We can output the final geometry and energy, a successful geometry optimization. Now, please don't hesitate to pause this video and replay that loop at your own pace. This concept is quite important for understanding the mechanics of a geometry optimization. The video player also has adjustable playback speed, so feel free to slow this down or speed it up to watch the finer details. Let's stop here for a moment. In the next video, we will pick back up and describe the specifics of what we just watched.